Madam Secretary, thank you. Thank you. I could get a Gloria Montano Green, that would be nice. Great to see you all today. Good afternoon and welcome to the Prospective Plantings and Grain Stocks Briefing. My name is Joe Parsons. I serve as chair of the Agricultural Statistics Board. This briefing is for the secretary and other policymakers at USDA to better understand the content and context of today's reports. We're honored to have Gloria Montano Green, Deputy Undersecretary for Farm Production and Conservation, Mission Area as our secretary designate today. We're also pleased to have USDA Deputy Chief Economist, Dr. Cindy Nickerson with us as well. Today marks the one year anniversary of our first live stream of a NAS principal report. We're excited to continue this avenue uh, to share information from our key reports with a wider group of data users. We're also very excited to have members of the Mid-Atlantic Soybean Association, the Virginia Farm Bureau, and staff from the Senate Committee on Agricultural Nutrition and Forestry. Madam Secretary, I'd like to share that additional staff from our regional field offices came in to help on the report. Bianca Perneda, Michael Clam, and Julie Schmidt for a great assistance. I also want to take a moment to thank the tens of thousands of farmers that took time out of their busy schedule to answer questions about their farm so that these important data informing U.S. food and agricultural situation are possible. I have a few notes for our live streaming audience. The March Perspective Plantings and Grain Stocks Reports are considered principal federal economic indicator reports. The Office of Management and Budget provides specific guidance on how these important reports are to be released. OMB policy instructs policymaking officials to refrain from making public comment regarding these reports within one hour of the release of the report. Federal statistical agencies are guided to provide for a wide distribution of information in a variety of formats and be open about processes and procedures. We won't take questions during this briefing from the public. However, NAS staff are available for email or phone questions, and NAS will host a social media event one hour after the release of these data. We strive to have everything presented at this briefing match the official record. However, should there be any discrepancy between what is presented at this briefing and the published estimates, always refer to the official published estimates. I would like to introduce Mr. Lance Hodden, Chief of the NAS Crops Branch, for our briefing. Thanks, Lance. All right, thank you, Joe. Good afternoon. Welcome to everyone out there watching today's briefing as well. Uh, this is a big report for us, so I've got a lot of information, a lot of slides to share with you today. So I'll try to move fairly quickly uh, through these slides, but certainly we'll have time uh, afterward for any questions and such that you might have. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to jump on into things here. Uh, before we talk about the numbers themselves in the report, just want to give you a little bit of background in terms of where the data came from, uh, feeding into the estimates that we're publishing in today's reports. Uh, basically, two major surveys uh, we conducted for driving the numbers today. The first is our March Ag survey. This is a survey of nearly 73,000 farmers. Uh, you can see roughly the first two weeks of March. And we essentially asked them for two key pieces of information. One, how many acres of the various crops do you expect to plant this season? And then in addition to that, we also asked, what is the quantity of grains and oil seeds that you have stored on your operation uh, as of the beginning of March? Uh, in addition to that, we also have our off-farm grain stock survey. That's where we capture those uh, quantities of grains and oil seeds that are stored in those commercial facilities or off the farm. Uh, you can see there's about 8,100 of those facilities across the country. Uh, we collected that information roughly the same time uh, that we surveyed producers. The map you see at the lower portion of the screen there, uh, that shows you the sample sizes by state for the March Ag Survey, so you can kind of see how those 72,000 or 73,000 producers were distributed uh, across the country. Uh, one other piece of information, again, before we talk about numbers, uh, just kind of a reminder. Uh, this is a visual reminder of the fact that these are intentions uh, reported by farmers. Uh, as this graphic kind of suggests, the gold bar to the left, left that represents uh, the data collection period 
right? Roughly those first two weeks of March. Those two horizontalish lines that you see, that represents the normal corn and soybean planting progress. For reference, uh, clearly, uh, farmers were reporting these intentions before planting starts. Uh, in most places, there's a few uh, southern areas that have already planted, but for the most part, this is all ahead of planting, and in fact, most producers haven't even been in the fields yet. And so they are just that, their intentions. But as you can see with the orange bar to the right, uh, when we go back out and resurvey farmers in June, uh, that's going to be at the end of planting. In most cases, planting will be complete. And so we'll certainly have an opportunity then uh, to refresh things based on what farmers actually plant this season. But with that said, let's go ahead and the numbers. I always like to start things off in March by talking about uh, the principal crop total. This is just the sum of the 22 major crops planted across the U.S. Kind of gives us that big picture look of what's happening across all the crops this season. Uh, you can see we're estimating that total of 318.1 million acres. That's up 1.9% or 5.9 million acres uh, from what was actually planted to these same crops last season. Uh, down at the bottom, you can see a list of the top five states and further down that blue box, gives you a listing of what those 22 crops are that are included in this total. Uh, if we take just a little bit closer look at that total and how it compares over time, here you can see the top line does represent that uh, planted area for principal crops. The lower number is the harvested area, which we will forecast later in the season. Uh, but you can clearly see here, not only are we up sharply from last year, uh, but the 318.1 million acres puts us back pretty much in line with where we were back in 2015 to 2018, and in fact does represent the largest total since uh, 2018. This next graphic has just a little bit of additional information here. Uh, back in the two that beginning with the 2019 crop season, we did implement some program changes as we do following each census of agriculture. Uh, so if you actually look at the lighter shaded line here, we actually adjusted the numbers uh, so that all of these areas could represent the same states and same crops across that entire time frame. So if you factor out those program changes that we made, you can see this year's total or expected total very similar uh, to where we would have been back in 2018 if we put everything on the same playing field. Uh, this first map or first data map that I have for you uh, highlights the principal crop planted acreage by state uh, in comparison to last year. The way this map is laid out, the top number is the principal crop planted total for that state. The lower number represents the percent change from last year's final planted numbers uh, for those same crops. Any state colored in any shade of blue is increasing from last year. Any shade of red is decreasing. And of course, the deeper the shade, the larger the change, and as you would expect with such a large change nationally or such a large increase nationally this year, uh, we do see mostly blue states across the country, right? Mostly increasing acreage uh, year over year. Uh, the largest increase we see is in North Dakota. That's actually up 1.46 million acres uh, from what they actually planted last year, uh, but there were some pretty significant pre-plant issues last season. Uh, not only in North Dakota, but also in South Dakota, Minnesota, and into Wisconsin. Uh, and so you see some larger increases reflected because of that. Uh, again, we talk about nationally being the highest since 2018 across some of the key growing areas here, uh, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, uh, Kentucky, Missouri, Tennessee, through that portion of the country. We're looking at uh, basically the highest level there uh, since ranging anywhere from 2013 to 2018. So uh, definitely seeing uh, significantly higher acreage this season looking across the crops. Uh, I also like to share this uh, particular graphic in March. Uh, what we see here is a comparison between what we publish in March for the principal crop total and what those totals become at the end of the year uh, in reality. And so here you can see that percent change from March to final for the principal crop acres and I think what's really interesting here is that you see mostly very small changes happening, except those extreme drops that you see in years like 2019, those are typically reflective of weather-related issues of planting. Uh, in other words, high pre plant acreage. Uh, so the real story here is that in general, looking at these principal crop totals in March, unless we have some kind of unpredictable weather issue, they generally don't change too much. So farmers have a very good idea 
already this early in the season in total what crops they're going to plant. So with that said, let's go ahead and move on to the individual crops. We'll start things off with corn. Uh, based on farmer reported intentions, we are estimating 92 million acres uh, to be planted to corn this season. Uh, that's up 3.9% or 3.42 million acres uh, from what was planted last season. Uh, you see the top five states at the bottom there, and as the pie chart tells you on the right, those five states account for 52% of the expected corn planted acres in the U.S. Uh, looking at, uh, again, the corn acres over the last 10 seasons or so, you can see how that 92 million acres compares, obviously up sharply from last year, uh, but still below the 93.3 million acres planted just two seasons ago. Uh, this next map that I have just highlights the corn planted area by state. Uh, and again, like the previous map, a percent change from uh, what was actually planted last season. Again, a lot of blue states across the country, mostly increasing acreage. In fact, acreage is uh, either up or unchanged in 40 of 48 estimating states. Uh, again, the largest increase for corn is in North Dakota, uh, up 800,000 acres. Uh, but we're also looking at increases of 150,000 or more uh, in Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kentucky, Minnesota, and South Dakota. Next, we'll take a quick look at how the 92 million acre estimate compares with some of the published expectations, the way this uh, graphic is laid out. Each of those blue dots represent an individual industry member's published expectation. Uh, what they think the corn acreage is going to be this season. The red block represents that uh, NAS estimate at 92 million acres. Uh, it's kind of hard to see on the graphic there, but there is actually a blue dot right behind the red box. Uh, so you can see we are at the top end of the range, but just within the range. So uh, probably a few more acres here than most folks were expecting, as you can see. Uh, so maybe a little bit of a surprise there today. Next, we'll take a look at soybeans. Uh, again, based on farmers' intentions, we are estimating 87.5 million acres uh, to be planted this season. That's up just slightly less than one-tenth of a percent, in fact, just 55,000 acres uh, from what was actually planted last season. As we take a look at that across uh, the last several seasons here, you can see uh, remarkably similar, not only the last year, but the year before. Uh, so very consistent acreage level now for three seasons in a row. And as we take a look at the soybean planted acreage by state again and how it compares with last year, uh, kind of a mixed situation here, obviously fairly flat acreage nationally. So you've got some increases, some decreases. Uh, but again, like I've been saying, largest increase in North Dakota, again, rebounding from uh, the prevent plant issues last year. Similarly, again, in South Dakota, Minnesota, and Wisconsin. You do see the pound sign next to several numbers on this map. Uh, that is because uh, it indicates a record high. So if realized, uh, the planted acreage in Illinois, Nebraska, New York, Ohio, and Wisconsin will be record high this season. Next, taking a quick look at the published expectations for soybean acreage and how it compares. Uh, here you can see the red block down for the lower end of the graphic. And so here we're a little bit lower than most folks were expecting. So a little bit higher on corn, a little bit lower on soybeans. If we put the two together, uh, what we've done with this map is we've just literally combined the corn and soybean acreage estimates uh, and given you a comparison to last year. And so here you can see 179.5 million acres expected to be planted to the two crops together. That's a 2% increase year over year. Uh, you see some pound signs on this map as well. Arizona, Idaho, Kentucky, Missouri, Ohio, and Wisconsin expecting to plant uh, record high levels of the crops. And I think this is kind of interesting because if you look at the corn and soybeans together, uh, that 179.5 million acre estimate pretty much right in the middle of those combined expectations. So again, I think combined, it's pretty similar to what most were expecting, just a bit more corn, a little less soybeans in terms of mix than what a lot of people were expecting going into the report. Uh, next, we'll look at cotton, 11.3 million acres expected to be planted to all cotton this season. That's down 18.2% or 2.5 million acres from what was planted last season. Uh, we'll move quickly through the. The graphics here to talk about the story here. Here you can see just visually that sharp 
uh, decline, of course, basically taking us almost right back to where we were just two seasons ago. We saw the big spike in planted last year. But of course, with the weather issues, harvested area dropping significantly, those dry conditions continue to persist, and that's weighing heavily on farmers' intentions. And that's the big part of why we see uh, acreage back down so much this year. Uh, in addition to the dry weather, some concerns over input uh, prices have been mentioned as well. As we look across the country, uh, pretty much down almost everywhere. Uh, you can see a slight increase in Arizona. Of course, that's not a major producing state for us. The big state, Texas, uh, you can see down nearly 21%. That's 1.6 million acre decline uh, in planted area in Texas this season. Also looking at a reduction in Georgia, our second largest producing state. Uh, this is all cotton we see here, but I would point out in California, uh, they're actually expecting to plant a record low upland uh, cotton acreage this season. Uh, this does not appear to be a big surprise. You can see uh, the 11.3 million acre estimate pretty much falling right in the middle of those published expectations. Uh, moving on to winter wheat, of course, this is our second estimate of the season for this fall seeded crop. Uh, we're now estimating 37.5 million acres were planted uh, to winter wheat this year. That's up 1.5% or 555,000 acres from what we published back in January. Uh, overall, they were up nearly 13% uh, from what was planted last season. Uh, this graphic really shows the uh, big increase that we've seen over the last couple of seasons. In fact, it's the highest planted acreage since 2015, and 23% or 7 million acres above where we were just uh, in 2020. So a big rebound after many years of declining acreage for winter wheat. If we look at the change from last year for the winter wheat state by state, here you can see a lot of not only blue, but a lot of deep blue, a lot of large increases. Uh, year over year, driving that 12.7% increase nationally, uh, right up through the uh, key growing area, the hard red growing area of the plains, uh, all the way from Texas north to uh, North Dakota, but also in the east, the soft red uh, sharp increases this year. Our largest acreage increase year over year is in Texas, up 1.4 million acres, uh, but we're also looking at 150,000 acre or more increases. Uh, in Colorado, Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, Michigan, Missouri, Nebraska, and Oklahoma. So big acreage this season, pretty much across the board. Uh, here you can see a uh, comparison to the expectations here, much like uh, we published back in January for our December uh, estimate there, a bit more uh, than folks were expecting. So we're continuing to uh, see folks kind of chase uh, that number upward this season. Uh, next, we have other spring wheat uh, planted area. They're expected to total 10.57 million acres this season. That's down 2.4% uh, year over year, or 265,000 uh, acres. And here, a little bit different story, uh, a continuing trend downward, as we've seen. In fact, if realized, this will be the smallest other spring wheat planted area since 1972. And as you can see in the graphic, represents the fifth consecutive season of declining acreage. Uh, looking at how this acreage stacks up across uh, the various states, of course, our largest producing states there, you can see uh, Montana, North Dakota, Minnesota through there, uh, decreases in all three states. Uh, in fact, acreages uh, down or unchanged in all of one of the states, uh, and that's Idaho, which is relatively small. Acreage looking at the 10.6 million acre estimate here and how it compares with expectations again uh, looks to be fairly well in line uh, with both what we were expecting. Uh, moving on to Durham wheat, 1.78 million acres expected to be planted there. That's up 9.1% or 148,000 acres uh, from what was planted last season. Uh, as you can see already on the bottom of the graphic here, North Dakota and Montana, of course, making up the vast majority uh, of that acreage. Uh, overall, uh, looking at across time, you can see we've been relatively flat the last couple of seasons, but uh, seeing that increase this year, so now the highest level expected since 2018. Uh, and again, Montana and North Dakota very clearly driving uh, the acreage increase this season, as you can see on the map. Uh, maybe a little bit more than most people were expecting. 
uh, but certainly not too far out of line there. Uh, obviously, somebody uh, a little bit higher than everybody else. So we're definitely staying in the range there, uh, but maybe a little bit stronger than folks were expecting today. Uh, we do have a number of other crops included in the prospective plantings report. I'll move fairly quickly through these. You can see not much change to barley acreage expected this season. Uh, in fact, down less than 1%. Canola acreage uh, expected to be up 2.6%. We're expecting record high acres for canola this year nationally and in North Dakota. But as we look to the southern part of the growing area, we're actually expecting record low acreage in Kansas and Oklahoma. So kind of a mixed bag. On the canola this season, looking at the chickpea crop, expected to be down 3.6% uh, from last year. Dry edible bean acreage uh, intended to be down 1.9% to the lowest level since 2019. Uh, dry edible pea acreage, though, uh, right at a million acres, you can see expected to be up 8.8% from what was planted last season. Uh, big drop expected in flaxseed acreage this year. Uh, both Montana and North Dakota expected to be off more than 30%. Uh, from last year, driving that number well below last year. Uh, farmers intending at this point to harvest about 50.6 million acres of all hay this year. Uh, that is up 2.2% uh, from what they actually harvested last year. That would represent the first acreage increase uh, since 2018, uh, despite the fact that we're still looking at some pretty dry conditions across much of the West. Uh, but there's a great need, and so farmers are optimistic and hoping to get an increase there. But even at these numbers, uh, we would see record low hay acreage in California, Delaware, Illinois, North Dakota, Ohio, Rhode Island, and Wisconsin. Uh, speaking of record lows, uh, lentils you can see off pretty sharply uh, year over year. We're expecting record low acres in Washington there. Uh, Oat acreage expected to be up about 3.3% year over year, and peanuts. Uh, just over a million and a half acres uh, intended to be up 6.7%. We're looking at increases or no change from last year in all states except New Mexico, Oklahoma, and Texas this season. A uh, big increase expected in rice this year. You can see that total up 16.2%. We're actually looking at increases in all states except Texas, where we're actually looking at a record low acreage uh, for rice this year. But again, rice needs water. Texas doesn't have a lot of water right now. And so obviously a little different situation going on there. On the contrary, in California, we're expecting a big increase this year. As you know, in recent days or recent weeks, uh, the water situation out there has changed considerably. And so uh, farmers are a lot more optimistic about growing rice there this season. Uh, looking at soil, we're expecting acreage to drop five and a half percent. Kansas and Texas are, of course, by far our leading producing states there. Uh, Kansas is off 150,000 acres. Texas, unchanged from last year, but last year was a record low. So they expect to continue to be at record low uh, sorghum acreage this year. Uh, sugar beets, again, just over 1.1 million acres uh, expected to be planted there. That's 4.2% below last year, would be the lowest acres since 2008. Uh, we actually expect a record low in Montana. Uh, in Michigan, they're expecting the lowest acreage since 1985, and Nebraska is looking at the lowest total since 2014. Uh, sunflowers off 19.6% year over year. Uh, so we're looking at the fourth lowest total on record there, and tobacco uh, expected to be 197,000 acres harvested this year. That would represent the second lowest tobacco acreage on record. Uh, the next three slides or next three graphics that I have really just kind of tie everything back together. Uh, we've talked a lot about all the individual crops. So just to give you a few quick visuals on how they really stack up across those 22 crops. This first graphic just shows you literally uh, the planted acres estimates for each of those crops. So you can get a quick visual on kind of how dominant corn and soybeans are uh, in the mix of things here. And then the next two give you a little bit uh, of a visual on how those changes are stacking up compared to last year. This first graphic uh, shows you the percentage change. Uh, so obviously all those bars moving to the right indicate the crops increasing in acreage, uh, those decreasing toward the bottom going to the left. So on a percentage basis, uh, we see the biggest increase coming in rice, the largest decrease in sunflower. But here, if you wanna see it in acreage terms, uh, winter wheat definitely showing the largest increase followed closely by corn. 
Uh, and of course, cotton on an acreage basis showing the largest decline uh, year over year. With that said, we'll kind of shift gears a little bit away from the perspective plannings report. Now we'll talk about the grain stocks report. Uh, we'll start things off by talking about all wheat. Uh, of course, for wheat, this represents our third quarter stock. So as of March the 1st, uh, all wheat on hand, totaling 946 million bushels. Uh, that's down 8.1% from what was stored at the same time last year. Uh, On-farm stocks actually up 30.4% year over year, but the portion stored off the farm down nearly 16% uh, from the same time last year. Uh, getting a little bit of a visual look at what's happening with the all-wheat stocks here. The way this graphic is laid out, uh, each of those vertical bars represents the beginning supply for each of the crop seasons represented there. Uh, you see the four horizontal lines representing the four quarterly stocks estimates that we published throughout the year. As I mentioned, this is third quarter, so that 946 million bushel total you see represented with the gray line. Uh, the 2.35 billion bushel beginning supply, you can see that was down 5.7% from the previous season, so that's having a big impact on why our stocks are down from last year. Looking at the December to Feb disappearance, 366 million bushels. That was actually up 5.1% from the same time last season. Uh, does not appear to be much of a surprise with the all wheat stocks total. You can see the red dot or red block pretty much right in the middle of those published expectations. The next we'll take a look at corn. Of course, this is our second quarter stocks uh, for corn. You can see as of March the 1st, 7.4 billion bushels uh, we're on hand, that's down 4.6% uh, from March 1 a year earlier. Uh, On-farm stocks up just slightly year over year, but the off-farm stocks down 10.4% from a year earlier. Both the all stocks and off-farm stocks for corn are at the lowest March 1 levels since 2014. Again, looking at it visually similar to what I showed you for the all wheat stocks here, the beginning supply, the 15.1 billion bushels is down 7.4% uh, from where we were a season earlier. And looking at our December to February disappearance for corn, 3.42 billion bushels, that's off nearly 12% from the same time a year earlier. Uh, looking at the published expectations now, it compares to today's estimate uh, a little bit uh, below the middle of the range, but certainly falling well within the range. So it doesn't appear to be a big surprise there today either. And uh, next we'll move on to soybean stocks, a 1.69 billion bushel stored as of March the 1st. Uh, that's down 12.8% from a year earlier. Uh, very little change from last year on the on-farm side, but big drop on the off-farm. You can see down 20.8%. On that total, looking at the uh, all stocks for soybeans, nine of the 12 major uh, states there are down year over year. And again, looking at the stocks over time, uh, here you can see that uh, beginning supply, the dip 3.6% uh, below uh, where we were last year. However, that still was the fifth largest beginning supply for soybean stocks. Uh, and again, December to Feb disappearance on this crop was up 10.9% from the same period a year earlier. Uh, I should mention the overall stock level for soybeans does also represent the fifth highest March 1 total on record. Uh, next, we'll just give you a quick look at the industry expectations for soybean stocks and how that compares. Uh, again, very similar to corn, a little bit below the, uh, the middle of the range, but certainly well within that main cluster. Of dots that you see represented there. So probably not a big surprise here either. Uh, we'll move on to the uh, rough rice stock. As of March the 1st, you can see 76.5 million hundredweight uh, were on hand. That's down 16% uh, from a year earlier. 23% uh, drop in the on farm, 14.6% uh, reduction in the off farm year over year. And again, graphically, you can see the big drop in the beginning supply this season. Uh, our disappearance, though, over the last uh, three months was actually 29.3 million hundredweight compared to 35.9 during the same time a year earlier. Uh, just a few other crops included in the green stock report today as well. You can see big increase in our barley stocks up 21.8% year over year. 
Uh, Durham wheat stock up 18.1% to 35.8 uh, million bushel stored as of March the 1st, but that is still the fifth lowest March one stocks on record and the second lowest since 2012. Uh, oat stocks virtually unchanged from a year earlier. The sorghum stocks down sharply, but again, we had considerably lower production last year due to the dry conditions in the key growing areas. And then last but not least, our sunflower stocks up 5.2% from where they were a year earlier. Our off-farm stocks, specifically for sunflowers, actually at a record low though. So uh, the increase is driven by, you see that huge increase in what's stored on the farm this year. Uh, just a few uh, notes and reminders that I'll share before we wrap things up here. This next slide just highlights some of the upcoming reports over the next month or so. Uh, you can see this coming Monday, not only do we have our regular monthly care reports, but we kick off the crop progress season. So we will be issuing our first weekly crop progress and condition report uh, for the season. So you'll see that one every uh, Monday or first working day of the week until the end of November. And so that's a big day for us. Uh, we've got our historical track records for crop production coming out on the 10th. So you can see uh, visually how the numbers compare over time there. Our next crop production report on the 11th. On the 19th, we'll have our second uh, annual national hemp report. Uh, last year, of course, representing the first uh, report that we issued in that space. So uh, we're looking forward to getting the second one out the door. Cattle on feed and ag prices and also coming up toward the end of April as well. Uh, speaking of things that are new, uh, we're doing something a little bit different here and uh, not very long from now, at one o'clock. Uh, normally at one o'clock, I host our stat chat series on Twitter. We're going to do it a little bit different today. We're going to do it in Twitter spaces. And so I can tell from looking around the room, a lot of people don't know what that is. It means that instead of just tweeting uh, questions and answers, you will be able to ask them out loud. And I'll be able to answer them out loud, hopefully. And so we're going to uh, just try to expand that a little bit and see if that gives folks a little bit better interaction than we're even able to have with stat chat. So we'll see how that goes today. Uh, coming up in just a few weeks, we've got our uh, spring data users meeting happening. Uh, physically, we will be in Omaha uh, hosting it there, but there will be a virtual component as well. So uh, you can see this registration information is out there and open. So we'd encourage folks to get out there, uh, get signed up. We'd love to see you in Omaha, but if you can't make it, we'd love to see you online. And of course, the census. We always want to mention the census. There is still time to respond. So if you haven't had a chance to get your form back in yet, uh, there's still some time. So I'd strongly encourage you to get out there and get that uh, completed for us. That is some key critical information. And so everything we can do to get that information as complete and accurate as possible uh, is certainly going to uh, benefit everyone involved in agriculture. So that is the last slide that I have. Uh, we're going to wrap things up for the live stream. So I'd like to thank everybody for joining us. That does conclude uh, this live stream portion of the event. So we look forward to seeing everybody uh, out here online again next time. So thank you very much.